hot mess today, folks. Hot mess. I have already spilled water on myself and a project, which I'll show you later. Yeah. And filmed about 25 seconds of me fiddling with the camera and practicing and saying, Lord only knows what. That was great. Great. Anyway, believe it or not, we have an agenda today. So, you would think we would have some kind of order, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I hope everyone had a great October, great stitching month. Um, it was pretty good for me. It's been very busy, so I'll be very glad when um, November is over and we are into December. And believe it or not, even with Christmas, my life will slow down and become more manageable. I have a couple bits of housekeeping today. First up, you may recognize the collar. I'm wearing my Jimmy Flossie fan club t-shirt because I did an interview with Jimmy Flossie. So if you're interested, you can go over to uh, Emily C. Eclectic Possessions. Go over to her channel and check that out. Although, do keep in mind that if you come to my channel for the relatively wholesome, family-friendly content, you're not going to find that over there. It's a different vibe. So, if that's not your thing, stay over here. Yeah, don't, don't, don't go over there. Um, kept it reasonably clean for, for Jimmy Foss too, but still. It's kind of the difference between the Muppets and Avenue Q if you are familiar with both of those. Uh, other housekeeping things. I had a couple comments on my last video about the sound, asking if I could speak up a bit. I will try to project a little more in this video, but I tend to speak pretty quietly anyway, and also my husband's in the next room, and it's, it, I feel weird with him listening to me. Hi. Um, I know he's in there. So, the thing, oh, um, so a couple things I've noticed when I am doing subtitles on my videos are if you're you if you are watching on a computer with using the internal speakers, that's the worst usually for sound quality. Um, computer with external speakers is better. Phone also better. Um, and if you are projecting it to your television, uh, which is how I watch Floss Tube, I have Chromecast, so I project it um, to, uh, through the TV. Uh, that's the best sound quality. You're going to hear most things there. You can also, if, except for this video currently on November, I forget where we are, whatever today is, Daylight Saving Time Day. Um, Except for this video and my last one because I haven't gotten to those quite yet. Uh, you can also turn on subtitles at the bottom and it'll help you figure out what I'm saying when I do drop my voice a little bit. Uh, which is, you know, as much as I try, I mean, that's the way I naturally speak, so it's going to happen sometimes. Um, speaking of subtitles, I mentioned the last video does not yet have them. Uh, that is something that I'm really dedicated to doing because I think it's very important um, to be... To include as many people as possible in Floss Tube. Um, I have not yet gotten to my last video because my computer decided to become incredibly slow and start showing its age, so I had to get a new one. Um, so that means that I have not, I had a couple weeks or about four weeks where I did was not able to do subtitles because it just, it would lag too much. Uh, so I'm trying to catch up. I did do my finished parade and I'll do my, my previous video and then get to this one before I shoot my next video. That's the goal. Uh, any other housekeeping things? I told you. Got a list. Um, Facebook. Facebook was the last thing. I do get a few friend requests through Facebook. Um, my Facebook page is not particularly focused on stitching, uh, and I do 
Okay. So basically, I, ha I have some rules for Facebook friends. Um, and this goes back to people I went to high school with even, or went to elementary or middle school with, or grew up with, whatever. Everybody, we go by the same rules. Um, I have to recognize your name. And I have to, or recognize your name and or your face. Um, I have to have at least one good memory associated with you. That's how I keep from getting too bogged down in the, oh, we went to school together 20 years ago and we haven't spoken in all that time, but I recognize your name, so I'm gonna add you to Facebook. Nah, we have to, two-factor authentication. Authentic, blah, blah, blah. It's one of the days, people. Um, so there is that. So if I don't friend you on Facebook or accept your friend request on Facebook, it's just because I try to keep that a little more locked down because it's not solely a stitching page. I mean, that's more of like um, real life Jessica instead of schoolhouse stitcher Jessica. Um, and two, even if you, well, back up a second. Um, so if I haven't accepted your friend request, it just means that I don't know you um, incredibly well. <laughs> and if we have met in person and, you know, we did share a story, I'm also really bad with names. <laughs> so, um, you know, just, just give it a little time as we, um, I very rarely delete friend requests. So usually later I'll be like, oh yeah, I do know you. We had that great time stitching together. And then I'll accept our friend request and it'll be fine. Um, but if not, you know, it just means I need to have like more conversations with you or meet you in person or, you know, have a little more interaction on, um, whether that's on Facebook or FlossTube or Instagram or whatever. Um, the other thing I did want to mention is even if I do accept your friend request, so this has happened twice. I accepted somebody's friend request because they met conditions A and B. I recognized them. We had some good memories. And then some of the posts that started showing up in my feed were a little disturbing. Um, if I accept your friend request and I start, first of all, I won't, I will never unfriend somebody because we have different political views or because we have different religious views or, um, you know, I have different political views than my entire family, almost. Um, I have different religious views than some of my friends. I have, you know, I, I have a very diverse group of friends and coworkers. Uh, so I'm never going to delete somebody just because they view the world differently than I do. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, we are generally all want to make the world a better place and we have different opinions on how to do that. And that's it. But if I accept your friend request and things start showing up on my feed, like, um, I got notes. Uh, everyone from Mexico, even if they're here legally, legally, the quotes were there. Um, we just need to send them all back to where they came from because they don't belong here anyway. Nothing good ever comes out of that country. Or the world would be a better place if all Muslims were immediately annihilated. Come on, people. That's not just having different views. That's just, that is a level of vitriol that I am not prepared to deal with from people that I have only a passing acquaintance with. Um, so yeah, I have a very, like I said, I have a very diverse group of friends. I have a very diverse group of coworkers. My husband and I have coworkers who come from dozens of countries and represent every major religion. And if I'm gonna, if I friend you and that kind of stuff starts showing up on my newsfeed, I expend enough mental and emotional energy dealing with that with people I have known my entire life 
and I'm not, I, I, I'm, I just can't do it. I can't do it on Facebook with people that I barely know. So keep that in mind. If you're going to send me your friend request, make sure we actually know each other, make sure we have good memories and make sure that you are not stripping the humanity from millions or billions of people and in effect losing some of it yourself. All right, that difficult build of business taken care of. I see we're almost 11 minutes in and I'm starting to speak softer because it was upsetting. Um, moving on to happier subjects like what I've been doing for the past month, which is partially happy, I guess. Um, at the begin toward the beginning of October, I did go to Stitching at the Beach in Myrtle Beach. Uh, this is my first time going to this particular retreat. I do have some friends who have been going there for many years. Um, so that was fun. I got to hang out with some of the Georgia Stitchers and Carolina Stitchers. Um, there was actually mostly Carolina Stitchers. Uh, so like Charlene and Karen and Faye and uh, Linda, um, Yvonne, Lori, Natasha. I got to meet Nicole. Hi, Nicole. That was great. Um, I met Sandra. Hi. She said she watches my videos. She was very nice. Um, but yeah, I had a great time. Ordinarily, it's just a retreat where you show up and you all stitch together. Um, and they don't have any really activities planned. They have exchanges and such, but they don't have classes. But this year, they had classes. So I signed up for two. Um, one of them was by Summer House Stitch Works, and it was the Harvest Home Pen Keep, which you've seen me working on for a while. And I got it finished. Finished. Here's the back, and raise the song of Harvest Home. And this is just wool, and cut a slit in the bottom to stuff it, and sewed it up with the buttonhole stitch. Um, you mentioned I spilled. I mentioned I spilled water over a project. Yeah, I had water set up so I could take a sip if I got thirsty during my video, and I kicked it onto this. Um, you can see it's a little darker here. It's drying. Thank God the thread does not appear to have run because then I would be really upset, but it's good. So I really like that. Harvest on Pinky. Uh, the other one I signed up for was by Riveris, and it is um, another pain keep class, but a different type. Um, so it looks like this. We got all four patterns, um, but we got the kit and the, the spindle, but we got the kit materials for one, and I chose this one. I kind of wish I'd gotten, they had the black spindle for sale. If I ever see this again, I'm probably going to buy it because I really like it. Um, but I chose the patriotic one. And I have not done that yet, but here's what the spindle looks like. Uh, so it has two little holes where you can um, put your scissors in there. And this screws off so that you can put um, this part. The felt with your stitching on it, you basically um, thread this through there and it will sit around here. So, I have not gotten to that one yet. It's on my list, but I think I'm gonna change the colors actually a little bit, and uh, these are kind of bright for me, so I'm gonna make them a little more prim. All right, I also went to, so that was, that was really fun, and that was from Wednesday through, I left on Sunday. And I happened to have a sampler guild meeting on Sunday. So I drove basically, I left at about 7.30 in the morning and drove straight 
through just stopping to grab a bite to eat, um, drove to the Sampler Guild meeting in Marietta at 2.30. Uh, because they were doing their journey meeting where they were all showing their projects of things that they had signed their contract to focus on over the past year and they were showing their pro progress on that and whether they'd finished it. And I really wanted to be there for that. Um, other things that have kept me busy this month, I've been going to some Clemson football games, the Tigers. Uh, so I've been, you know, out of town for that a little bit. I also had a lot of is issues with allergies earlier this month, so I couldn't film because I was all sneezy and my eyes were puffy and it was horrible. I actually went to allergy testing, which I have not done since I was about like 10, so almost 25 years. Um, I had a skin test done and she's like, oh, you're basically allergic to everything. Seriously, I told her at the beginning, oh yes, I'm allergic to pine pollen. And at the end she said, yeah, when you said you were allergic to pine pollen, I thought, eh, maybe not, because it's not a really common allergy. The the pollen is, is usually too big to get up in the nasal cavity, but no, you're allergic to all trees, including pine, as well as all grasses, all weeds, cats and dogs, and dust mites. Great. So I'm going to be starting on allergy shots soon. That'll be fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and not only got the back skin test, which was really annoying, but they also did the, the, the one with syringes, like the real syringes, where they inject it one by one in your arm, and that one kind of hurt. Um, that one was itchy. <sighs> that one's still itching. It's been a week really allergic to dust mites. So I've been clean, also have my video has been delayed because I've been cleaning my apartment like crazy, like scrubbing the baseboards crazy. So 17 minutes in and I have shown you like one stitching project. Let's fix that. When I was out stitching at the beach, I managed to get good progress on summer schoolhouse lesson three and when I returned from the beach I finished it. I really like this flag on the side of the house. So that is lesson three. I did receive lesson four which looks like this. I'm thinking this will not take me as long, <laughs> she says, knock on wood. I'm thinking this will not take me as long because it doesn't have like that big solid block of stitching like the house and the people did. Um, it's a little more open with the flowers. Uh, I also, it also comes with charts for this little strawberry and this horn book. And I did buy the finishing kit for the horn book. Um, it comes with the trim and the horn book, which you have to paint and uh, sand down to distress the wall. So I have not yet started on those, but they are next on my list. Um, and then I'll be done with that series. I'm really hoping to finish the series before the end of the year. That's my goal finish it before the end of 2017. All right, and the reason I have not started lesson four yet is, well, one, it was a little delayed in coming out, and two, I started on October 1st, I started 1612 by the Primitive Needle, and I finished it. This is stitched one over two on 40 count runestone by Dixie Sampler um, hand-dyed fabrics, and it is stitched with the call for colors. Um, this color, the fill-in, this is all filled in. Yeah, that was a lot of stitching. I was like, oh, let's do a quick little Halloween project. This is not quick, people. Like, here's my hand. This is how big this is. It's not little. Um, but this is uh, Weak Styleworks Confederate Gray. If you do this pattern, 
if you do it on 40 count and you don't have to frog, that's how much Confederate gray you're gonna have left. Yeah, not a lot. So if you're gonna do this on any other count, including 36, buy two skeins. You're gonna need it. Uh, this pattern is going to Diana at It Is Kismet Stitches next so that she can borrow it. So two finishes, so it wasn't too bad. I also wanted to, to show you another finish. This is not one I finished this year, but when I got out my Halloween decorations, I realized it was in there. This is Mill Hill Love Halloween. Oops, stole. This was my very first Mill Hill kit, and then I was hooked, and I love it. So he goes with the Halloween decorations. And... Let's see, we showed you Harvest Home, which was my other, my one FFO for the month. Uh, my only, well, I don't really have any whips to show you. Um, I am going to show you this right quick. Uh, so, I mentioned that my Sampler Guild has a journey program. Basically, you choose the project that a project that you would like to either finish or make if it's a big project make significant progress on over the next year um, And you sign a contract like an actual contract that says I am going to finish This project. I'm going to finish X part of this project by next October and They give you a little tag To fit with your project you sign your contract, um, and then you have the next year to work on it. So for my journey piece, I chose Village of Hawker and Hollow. Now, when I started this, I said I wanted to finish one block every two months. Well, that has not happened. This should have been, like, by the end of November, I should have finished this block. And you see, I have not even finished in the September block. So my goal for my journey piece is to finish six blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, they don't all have to be really solidly stitched blocks like this one. They could be a more open block like this, which takes less time. That's fine. I just want to finish six blocks by next October because that will put me um, that will put me on schedule for where I need to be with my personal goals because I want to finish this in May-ish of 2019. <laughs> I have moved my hands so much, my Fitbit thinks I made my, my daily step goal. No. Nice try. Uh, but that is, my, that is my journey piece for the Sampler Guild. So I am committed to finishing six blocks of this by next October. All right. Now, while I did not work on, sorry, I'm trying to clean up as I go because you have no idea how much crap is, well, you will have an idea soon how much stuff is surrounding you right now. Um, I did not, while I did not make progress on, on whips, I did have a new start in addition to 1612. Uh, so in my last video, I showed the Blackbird Designs Topiary and Bloom Pink Heap, and I mentioned that it, I bought it because it reminded me of the English Garden Sewing Bag, which was a limited edition kit, and you can't get it anymore. Well, a very kind viewer, hi Tracy, uh, contacted me and said, I have that chart. I stitched the kit and I, I still have the chart and I'd love to send it to you. So she sent me English Garden Sewing Bag, which I love, love, love. And she also, because she's so sweet, sent me the threads. And as you can see, they're looking not pristine because I started it. Um, this is on 32 count light exemplar by Lakeside Linens. I just happened to have a piece of this in my stash and it happened to be on the top of my stash when I was looking for fabric for this. So I opened my fabric box and I was like, perfect, done. Uh, I love these colors so much. It's so, so pretty. I'm so happy to have it. But that is 
not all that Tracy sent me. She mentioned, well, first of all, when I got the envelope, and I saved it to show you because I thought it was super cute, it had this little drawing on the outside, which is adorable. So I open up the package, and I see the chart, and I see the, the threads, and she also included this, a little scissor fob. How cute is that bee and the flower? I love this. So this is hand painted on a wooden disc, and she and her husband make these. Their business is Primrose Scroll Works and Mrs. Sears. And I will put, in addition to making scissor fobs, they also hand paint scroll frames. So they hand paint like the, um, the side pieces and the knobs that go on the scroll frames. Um, so she sent me some photos of her work and I'm going to insert those here. And if you are interested in contacting Tracy about her work, and she didn't ask me to, to, uh, to plug her on here, but I just thought that this was so cute. I'm like, do you do any more? <laughs> um, I would love to see pictures of the rest of your stuff. Uh, but if you are interested in contacting Tracy about her work, um, you can reach her at primrose scroll, scroll works at yahoo.com. And I will put that, um, right here and also in the in the uh, description box below um, because these are so cute I love it thank you so much thank you so much Tracy um, I'll put all of the I'll put all the information in the description box below all right the rest of the video is going to be haul. And if you're looking, I don't know how long this video is going to be. It's 27 minutes right now. But if you're looking at the length of the video and the length that's remaining, you're like, dang, that girl has a lot of haul. Yeah, they got a lot of haul. Hmm. Where to start? We're going to start with online orders. And some of these things are orders that I had placed a while ago and things are and like prepaid for and things are just not coming in so it's cool all right the first thing that i got or i'm not the first thing i got but the first thing that's on top the thing that's on top is the craftways cross stitch christmas handmade memories book it looks like this i think this is from 2013. i have been trying to find this book for a while for a price i'm willing to pay because i saw it um, quite some time ago and really loved a chart in it. And at the time the book was like $7. And I was like, oh, I'll wait. Yeah, the $7 ones were gone. And it started inching up in price. So I thought I bought it. And then the person I bought it from, they sent me the wrong book. They sent me 2015. I did not like 2015. It was too cutesy. They did not have 20. 13 in stock so I didn't get it but I finally found it on eBay for like 10 bucks including shipping and ordered it and here is the main reason I ordered this that's a Rosewood Manor now all of these little um, like little birds and bird Squirrel, all those little bitty creatures are done over one. And it's all stitched in DMC, uh, which I would probably swap out some of those for hand dyed threads uh, because I think it would look a little bit better in like this tree. 
but I really like it. And I also bought it. My nose is itching. Oh, okay. I think my hair is attacking me. Anyway, hot mess today, y'all. Hot mess. I also bought it because it has all the way at the very back. Bright Be Thy Christmas Tide by Threadwood Produce. Which I thought was super cute. And then, in flipping through, I realized that it has this really awesome crown design by Brooke Nolan of Brooks Books. Oops, where's my camera? There's my camera. Love that. This is probably the most well put together book that I have ever seen. Actually, I'm going to do a quick flip through because it's so great. Um, this is by Michelle Lutzen. We also have Ursula Michael and Barbara Anna. That's a little cat and a little dog. And it said Fleas, like F-L-E-A-S, Navidad, and Santa Claus, C-L-A-W-S. There's a John Elliott. Alice Oakley design. Just smatchy. Uh, this is Patty Connor. This is Bar by Barbara Sussop. Cute woodland scene. I like the cardinal. We have Jennifer Rodriguez. And, mm, sorry, Linda Bird. A cute Santa. Of course, the Rosewood Manor and Janelle Geis. Birds, deer. Another by Alice Ophon, which is a Another by Michelle Watson. I don't know if she, the, the thing with this is they don't put the designer's company that I can tell. So if she has a comp, if some of these have a design company, I'm not aware of it. Or I just don't connect like the designer's name with their, with their company. Uh, another by Jennifer Rodriguez. And another Ursula Michael. We have Lois Winston, Noel, a black work, uh, black work design by Elizabeth Almond. That's nice. Here is a sampler by Janelle Geis. And stockings by Elizabeth Spurlock. Sorry, I can't really see if it's showing up in the camera. So if you see the tip of my nose peeking over the book, that's why. All right, here's the cover design. This is by Sharon Pope. And I really like this. This is done in... Um, her. This is by Debbie Rowley. And a 
Stocking by Linda Burke. This is by Barbara Sestock. And card designs by Julia Lucas, which are very small. I don't know if you can see them. There are some ornaments by Praiseworthy Stitches, including this one down here, a little humbug, which I really like this, and I'm probably gonna stitch that sometime. And an angel by Ursula Michael. Another design by Ursula Michael. And some angels by Elizabeth Spurlock. And the Brooks Books Crowns. I mentioned. Here is one by Eric Shipley. Ship's Manor. And Emily Wilmer. Unfamiliar with her. It's cute. And ornaments by Julia Lucas. Ornaments by Cecilia Turner. And finally, an angel by Elizabeth Spurlock. Oh, I lied. Not finally. <laughs> there are a few more. Uh, we also have some little towel designs. Julia Lucas. And... These little perforated paper designs, or not perforated paper. Yeah, they are. I like Candace Thomas. And the last one, which I should have remembered because I thought it was really cool. This is by Teresa Cogut, K O G U T. This is Punch Needle. I want to learn Punch Needle because I want to do that. It's awesome. So on the whole, this was really worth $10. I love it. All right, other things I purchased from eBay or Stash and Load. I got The Winner's Pass by Blackbird Designs. Um, this is very similar to It's Spring Fever, the one that I showed framed last time. So I would like to stitch it on the same fabric and hang those together. I also picked up a little mill hill kit for a good price. Actually, I think I had a coupon that ended up making this free. Very good price. I picked up Good Huswife, the Sheldon Hawks house. I did not pay $19 for this. And Chart Makers, uh, which is Good Housewife and Kathy Barrick. Um, the Kathy Barrick designs tend to be um, still in stock, or you can still get them through Caratel Samplings. Uh, the Good Housewife designs, mm, I haven't seen this one anywhere, so that's why I'm thinking it's a Good Housewife. Uh, but this is Be True. And finally, I got the Cricut Collection Autumn Blooms kit. This was from the Silver Needle um, help from our friends Stitching Circle. I just really, really love this design. Um, so I was on the lookout for the kit because I'm not part of this club. And I finally found one. Also, in the online purchases. I'm telling you, we have online, we have 
online from stores. We have online or in stores, and then we have retreat stuff. This is gonna be a long video. Hmm. So seriously, if you don't like haul, I hope you've already skedaddled because there's nothing but haul. All right, my picture this plus order came in. I picked up a fat quarter of 40 count Rin, which I love. This is what I stitched the uh, It's Spring Fever on, and it's what I'm going to stitch the Winter's Pass on. I also got a fat quarter of 40 count Heritage. Um, this is fairly, okay, that's true to color. This is fairly green. Um, just FYI, if you are looking for heritage and you get the 40 count, it shows up pretty green. Um, but that's okay. I always have stuff I can stitch on things. Clearly, I have stuff I can stitch. Um, I decided to try some new to me colors, so I got, um, 40 count ancient a fat eighth. Here's what that looks like. And I got 40 count shale in a fat eighth. Um, this is more of a mauve -y color, I think. That's accurate. Um, it has just a little, a touch of, um, like an undertone of pink or blush to it uh, rather than being more of a brown. It's more of a pinky brown. Um, and then I bought 32 count cauldron in a fat eighth. I'm planning to stitch prairie moon, a prairie moon on this. Probably to follow you, I'm not content. Um, yeah, this side. One side the orange is much more prominent, and I don't like that. I like this better. That, and then I got a 32 count piece of murky, which I'm also, <sighs> I had plans for this and I forgot what they are. Hmm. I like that one. I think if I were to get murky again, I would want to get a bigger piece so that this, you know, you see how it's really dark over here and really light over here. Um, I think if you get a bigger piece, you can kind of control how you cut it a little more and how you position your design. So, but I really, I really do like the colors in it. All right. Next up, stuff that I got from online needlework stores. So not eBay or Stash Unload or Etsy or Picture Plus. Plus. Um, first of all, my club kit, uh, the ladies, or not, the, the Colonial Gatherings Club from Dying to Stitch came. Plum Street Samplers Autumn Hill. I love this. And... Jen from Jen Stitching Niche had mentioned that she was in uh, Cross Stitch Peddler in Decatur, Alabama, and she found some primitive needle charts, which I was super jealous about. So I ended up calling them. Uh, I said something on her video, I'm like, oh, I'm so jealous. They must have just found those because I had her go through every primitive needle chart in the store when I called. Um, so she must have had like a hidden stash. But Jen said, oh, she had multiple copies of two of them, so why don't you call, you could call and see if they still have them. So I called, and they did. So I got to gather and gaze. Gaze with that. And then the rest of my, last time I showed some things I got from House of Stitches. Um, the rest of my order from them came in. I got... The Queen's Crowns by Plum Street Sampler. This is to go with that, um, the Elizabeth the first piece, the in crown of the work that I got last time. And I got two pin keeps from Blackbird Designs. Small Token and Peace Rose.
And now I'm looking at this one and I'm wondering if I have it in a book somewhere. I don't think so. And if I'll do, I'll sell it. It's fine. And then Etsy was running a promotion where if you spent a certain amount, then you would get a $5 credit towards each of your next three purchases. Huh. I'll do that. So I ended up on Kathy Barrick's account at our so Ugh, store, Kathy Barrick's store. And I picked up Black Heart. I always, I love little motifs like this that are surrounded by a filled in background. I just, I really like that style. Picked up Autumn Harvest Sampler, which I've been eyeing ever since it came out in some kind of primitive magazine. Not a stitching magazine, but like a, you know, like Prim Living or, you know, some, that kind of themed magazine. I was glad to see she released that. And finally, I was not going to get this one, but I was lured in by the cow. Halloween on the farm. This is not nearly as big as it looks. This is only, if you stitch this on 40 count, it is 2 and 7 eighths by 8 and 5 eighths. So it's not terribly big. I love the cow. My family had a pet cow when I was growing up for many years, um, and she recently um, had to be put down because of old age. Because I don't, we don't know exactly how long cows live, but she was she was in her twenties, um, which is quite old for a cow. So they had to put it, put her down, sadly, but. Um, Nellie was a, a black and white cow like that and she would follow you around uh, on the farm and finally I got I think interweave.com um, somebody had posted that they were having a clearance on a lot of their stitching kits so I managed to pick up the set of three Santa's Not the basketball team. Um, so this is Wales. And Scotland. And Ireland. They were like $3 each. And I also got, because I thought these were, these are also on clearance and I thought they were just too cute. Um, these counting pens by Puffin and Company. Said so these are handmade fashion of semi-precious metals by local artisans in a small village in Thailand. Where project proceeds contribute to the health, education, and welfare of their community. And interestingly, they make their pens with tapestry needles so that they have a blunter point um, and you are less likely to draw blood when you're using your counting pins. Okay, so next stuck is stuff that I bought actually in a store. So when I went down to Stitching at the Beach, I drove through Lexington, South Carolina, which is where they have um, the needler. And when I walked in the door, they had a big selection of charts that were $1 each. The first one that I spied was this one, Carriage House Sampling's Biscuit Ornament. I love this. I have thought about buying this so many times and never actually did it. And then I found it for a dollar, so it was meant to be. Love it. I got Only One You, also by Carriage House Samplings. All right, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure how I feel about this U. It's a really 
gigantic sheet. It's a big sheet. Um, but for some reason I had to get it. So I did. She based it on a painting. Or off of a painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Giant sheep. Because someday I might need a giant sheep in my life. I don't know. It was a dollar. I had to get it. This other one I also picked up just because I've seen it online a lot. And I've always been like, oh, it's pretty. But I've never gotten it. Rosewood Manor Crabapple Tree. It has the tree through the seasons. I don't like the fabric. I like the design. I got Threadwork Primitives Leaping Stag. And Antique Spring Sampler and Hobbs 1834 by Shakespeare's Peddler. Um, and this is a very dark photo, but you can kind of get the idea. And then I did buy one thing full price. Um, I picked up Sampler Stocking by Kira Chow Samplings because I love, of all the stockings that she does, I think this is my favorite. This and the Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania German, Pennsylvania Dutch stocking. I have it. I got it at the, at a sale. I love this. And then at the retreat, they had several vendors set up. Um, so I tried to give them my money whenever possible. Um, reverse, I need to do this because it looks really quick and it's a full kit. So it has everything I need, but there's this pendant and it comes with all of these little charms. picked up Jolly Soul by Erica Michaels. This comes with the, the fr this is stitched one over one on 40 count silk gauze. I've never done that before, but we'll see how it goes. And this comes with the frame, the ribbon, and a piece of felt to put on the back. Um, so this is pretty bright for me, but it also had this alternative colorway, and I'm gonna do that because I prefer the, uh, the prim, from colors. All right, they have praiseworthy stitches there. And I have seen this chart a hundred times and I've never gotten it because the chart photo didn't, didn't really do anything for me. They had the model at the show and this is, this is gorgeous stitched up. Um, it uses Gentle Arts Moss, uh, Weeks Indian Summer and Weeks Whiskey. And this just does not show how rich the green is or the red. So if you ever see this stitched up, totally changed my mind on that chart. I had to get it. I picked up from Jeanette Douglas, um, I picked up Vintage Flowers. She had a, this has been my favorite of her vintage series, the Vintage Flowers vintage birds and vintage stars uh, but she had the stitch model of this and again gorgeous I had to get it and finally summer house stitch works was there and these I also bought based on the model um, this I think is gonna be a pretty quick stitch this is hark 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 And it says, Hark what news the angels bring, glad tidings of a newborn king. Here's that. And Simple Abundance, which I think is beautiful fall colors. I'm a big sucker for these diamond shapes, like anything that looks kind of like uh, the granny square. I love those. I also got a couple of gifts at the retreat, or a few gifts at the retreat. Um, so first of all, there is a woman, um, 
called the pumpkin lady and she went around and gave every attendee just a little selection of floss just random colors with this little pumpkin jingle bell and then Faye the Carolina stitcher made us these beautiful scissor keep or scissor pops scissor keeps with shell and starfish and South Carolina charm and a tiny little charm that says PALS 2017. Love this. And now that I've shown it, I can put it on my scissors. And then Sandra, um, who I met at the retreat, gave us all these little waxers from No Ordinary Needle. And I selected one that was shaped like an acorn. So thank you ladies. That was so sweet and I love everything. Uh, we also got some goodies um, from Amy at Down Sunshine Lane who put on the retreat. Uh, we got this, we all got a goodie bag and it had creative needle and hard angle embroidery. And a little stitching at the beach needle minder. and a sandcastle ornament. And we got some needle threaders. We each got a random color of needlepoint silk. Which I really love the one that I got. It's kind of stormy blue. And we got a random thread keep slash you could use it as a scissor bob because it has a little lobster clasp. But I got a bunny. I love it. And they had a... What's it called? Like, door prizes. Yeah. Um, so everyone got a ticket. And I won something. I never win anything. But they called, they, they drew my name. Or they drew my number. So, in this huge table set up of all things that you could pick from. And they had fabrics, and they had, you know, Vera Bradley bags, and they had, like, tumblers, and they had mystery boxes, and they had charts. And I was looking over everything, because I'm like, I should have done some prep work. I didn't think I'd win anything, so I didn't come up to the table to look and see what was available. Uh, but I ended up selecting these. This is the 12 Berries of Christmas by Erica Michaels. Um, so they have part one. And part two, which are days four, five, and six. And part three, seven, eight, and nine. And finally, part four, 10, 11, and 12. I love 12 Days of Christmas, so this was perfect for me. Okay. And if you have watched, if you follow me on Instagram, or if you follow Lori, Mischievous Stitches on Instagram, you have seen either a photo or a video of the freebie table. Tables. There were multiple tables, and they were stacked high. So I got a lot of stuff at the freebie table. I did leave things. I did leave things for others to pick up, um, and some of this stuff is stuff that I. Uh, some of it stuff that when I saw it, I'm like, yes, I am immediately getting that. And others are things that I set aside. And I'm like, well, I want to give other people a chance. So if nobody has taken them by the time that we're leaving the room on Saturday night, I'm gonna get them. And a lot of stuff nobody had gotten by Saturday night. So I took it because it needs a good home and I'm very willing to give it one. Alright, so some of the first things I pick are, um, picked up. We have some fabric. Uh, there was this nice, just not showing up at all, sky blue color. Um, 
can see it, it shows up better in the shadows there. Yeah, like down there. Um, so there's a sky blue color. This is an even weave. I am not sure what count. It is probably 32. Um, I got this piece of a 28 count. I think it's a Luvana. So I can do more one over one stitching like the uh, the summer schoolhouse. Um, I picked up this count piece of 32 count light exemplar, 13 by 18, by Lakeside Linens, which I love. Lakeside is my favorite um, linen company. It's nice. And then somebody put down a bag of fabric right in front of me. They put down multiple bags of fabric. Um, but I only got what I thought that I would actually use. Um, so like even if it's a pretty color, if it's 28 count linen, I'm probably not gonna stitch on it. But they had a 40 count Midnight Fantasy. I think this is by Silk Weaver. This is a beautiful blue. It's a gorgeous. And it's a huge piece. That does not show the color well. That's much better. Um, I love this fabric. I have no idea what I'm going to stitch on it, but I'm going to find something soon because it's beautiful. There was also a piece of 40 count precious metals, also by Silk Weaver, I believe. This is a more neutral color. Um, I really, really like this color. There's a teeny run in the linen, but it's fine. It was free. It's fine. Um, I really like this neutral color. And it's 40 count, which is bonus. All right, and the next piece I got was a fat half of 32 count witch's brew from Silk Weaver. Now I cut this down. Um, this that just made my the color on my camera do weird, weird things. It turns it yellow. <laughs> there you go. See that color? Um, this was a fat half. And I cut it down because I don't need a half of that color fabric. Um, so I gave a piece to a couple of the women who were at my table um, so that others can enjoy it. All right, let's just start going through this. So one of the things I was most happy about was finding this Blackbird Designs Country Garden, which is out of print. It's a cute, quick little design. I also picked up these Prairie Schooler cards. Knock Knock. Misfortune. And Who's There? And they had the little freebie cards. I've never seen this one, but I love it. Oops. And this. And I've also never seen this one. So my idea is to kind of make some kind of um, banner that I can hang along our windowsill using these and the little freebie charts. It's just a sketch of an idea right now, but it might come true. Okay. And other things. I picked a Lizzie Kate's summer basket and autumn basket.
and just Nan's Ice Moth. Just Nan's Three Santas. I like him the best. And the Snowflower Diaries under the pear tree. Because again, 12 days of Christmas, pear trees, close enough. Okay. And what else to show you? I picked a Christmas at Winterberry Cabin by With I Need on Thread. I love this one. This is one of my favorite finds. I barely got this one because it came out of a box, like an, a, a huge box. Um, and women had surrounded it and were just pulling it. Like I saw things, you know, briefest glimpses of things through cracks in, in the, the crowd and they were just like flying by. And the surface near the top of the box and I just barely managed to like get my hand in there and get it was a frenzy y'all it was kind of scary um I also got purple snowman by shepherd's bush this is the entire kit and angel of hope by lavender and lace this is one of those that I've always eyed because I just like the I like the composition of it, but I've never purchased it, obviously. So I had to pick it up. Um, this is Told in a Garden Family Treasure 3. Um, this is a terrible picture. But I saw this. Um, someone on Floss Tube was showing this. They found it. I think they found it at a thrift store, maybe. And it was already finished. And they did like a scroll up close up of the finished piece and it was beautiful so when I saw this I had to pick that up I got this just because I thought it was funny <laughs> trick or treat penguins by Rhodes Butterfly who I had never heard of this one is an older book I picked it up for this this is a sheepish designs but it also has I think this is a prairie schooler it's just a very simple game board um, and what else did I see in here I can't remember um, yeah, so that was a Prairie Schooler and, oh well, I can't find it. There was one more that I thought, oh yeah, I'll probably do that. But now, of course, I can't find it. That's how it goes. Um, but yeah, just an older, an older book with several Christmas designs. A couple on the back. So I'll stitch the Sheepish Designs ornament and then give this one away. I picked up Victorian Christmas Treasures 3, all stitched on perforated paper. I got this one because I like these four. Oh, and him. I like the Santa. And they do use quite a few beads on them, or some of the designs do. I picked up Blossoms in Baltimore by Rosewood Manor. This is one of those that I left till Saturday night because I thought surely somebody would want to pick that one up. But no one got it. I really like, I don't know that I would stitch the whole thing, but I like some of the individual motifs. So I would stitch those and then pass it on. There is Bright Needle Folk Alphabet Sampler, with the boneless bunny. 
and sisters and best friends Beatrice. Um, so this is two charts. It's this, which I will not stitch, and it's this, which I will. I got Antique Animal Sampler. Elizabeth's Needlework. You might have seen Emily C. working on this one. I picked up Butternut Road's Christmas Visit. Uh, they had a bunch of these Rosewood Manor freebies. Um, this one is Autumn Welcome. This is a much older book. This is Colonial Bouquets by Marilyn Tucker by So Fine Presents. I picked it up for this and this. Because I have a tablecloth that matches the colors in this and I thought that would be really cute to stitch and hang in my dining nook. The other ones. And here are the ones that are on the back. Found a couple of Plum Street sampler designs. I got Olga. Because even though I'm allergic to cats, I love her. I have a friend who has stitched both this one and the dog, who I think is named Boris, um, and has them hanging in her kitchen. They're so cute. I picked up Christmas Gathering, which was from the Colonial Gatherings Club um, before I was a member. This was 2014, I think, and I joined in 2015. It's just the chart, but I think I have those threads. I got the Primitive Hairs Christmas Carol Sampler. And Raise the Roof Sleepy Hollow Sampler, which you may have seen Jen at Jen's Stitching Niche finish this. I picked up Christmas Wishes Volume 2 by Blue Ribbon Designs. I got it for this because it's a B. I am not necessarily going to stitch this part, which says, may you find hope. I might, actually. I might change the colors. I like the B. We have Midsummer Night's Designs, Immortal Bloom. ink circles. This is spot on. So this is for um, those little pendants. Just had a bunch of different designs. And I happen to have some of those pendants that I need to do something with. Uh, there's this heart of mine. Love it. This is really cool. I've never seen this one. This is um, Celtic Beasties. Halloween are not. Look at this. These are the same, except this has not work, and this has like a dragon head, I think, or a snake head. Dragon head. Um, these are the same, except one is a spider and one is an octopus or squid. There's a cross. These, believe it or not, are cats. I think they look like lizards. But I really like those. Um, this is the spider bright way and this is the spider antique way. An octopus antique way. This is the snake two head antique way, snake unhead lagoon, and snake one head bright way. Huh. 
I'm definitely going to stitch some of those next year. And then I was very, very happy to find these. I picked up several um, of the Dimples Designs insects. They had Professor Fisbee's Freebie 1999. This is also um, the chart called Queen of the Bumblebees, which is my favorite. Freebie 2000. Um, this is the one, hmm, I think this is blue orchid bee. Uh, Emerald Orchid Bee, and Jeweled Skin. Okay, getting near the end. I have two more things, three more things. These, these are um, one of the things I snatched up immediately when I saw them. I got, I saw this one first, and I love this chart, and it's out of print. Christmas Flourishes by Mirabilia. Love it. And then I turned it over, and it has The Dreamer, also by Mirabilia. And the very last thing I picked up um, this is a spotted hair needle purse by Patrick's Woods. So I just saw this and this. And I said, okay, I'm going to pick this up and take it back to my table to get a little better look at it. Well, it turns out this has the fabric and the threads and the needle and it has the... DMC Pearl Cotton, and it has the little beads that you need, and the backing fabric, and some instructions to make a little, a little purse, basically. It's very, very tiny, like that big. But it also had these. Um, and when I saw these, I'm like, there's no way I'm putting this back. <laughs> this is coming home with me. These are... Scrimshaw. These are made out of uh, old ivory piano keys. So they're very, very thin. They're not cheap. And I love them. Especially the bunny. Uh, so they were in this little, this little box. And that's the main reason I picked it up. I was like, Look, it has some fabric, it has some threads. It's a full kit for something. I just don't know what it's a full kit for. And then I open it, I'm like, ah, there's Scripshaw. Love it, love it, love it. Um, I have a, a member of my sampler guild has put this box together, or not the box, put the purse together um, before. So I figured if I get stuck, I have plenty of people I can ask for help. That is it for the retreat freebie table. It was a massive freebie table, y'all. If I still have my photo, I'll put it in here. Yeah, it was a lot of freebies. Um, and like I said, so much was left at the end of Saturday night that it was ridiculous. Uh, so, yeah, had there not been so much, I would not have gotten so much. But, I mean, if nobody's going to take it and you don't know where it's going to end up and you love it, get it. That's my, that's my feeling. Okay, one last haul thing. Um, I also went to, someone had posted on a Facebook group that I'm a member of that there was a really big, there was an estate sale with a lot of needlework stuff. 
and they showed a picture. Um, it was just like floor to ceiling shelves and it had boxes of like Krynik and different rainbow gallery threads and Karen threads and um, there was something that was labeled like linen 32 count, linen 28 count, and there were just all these threads and you know accessories um, and it turns out I looked and I was like 30 minutes from my house. Like, okay, I'll, I'll go check that out. It happened to be free this, this weekend. Um, well, by the time I got there on Saturday, I think the sale started on Thursday. By the time I got there on Saturday, the fabric was sold. Um, the threads I was not going to get because they were like, it was like 200 to $500 a box. No, I'm not paying that. Mm -mm. So I went looking through what was left, and fortunately, since it was Saturday, it was half off. Uh, so I did get a few things. I picked up two small charts. This is Itty Bitty Honey by the Twisted Thread. And I don't like this chart. This is the Sweetheart Tree Celebrate Summer. I don't like the chart, so why did I buy it? Because it has a little bee charm. And it was 50 cents. So I would pay 50 cents for the charm. I also started looking and they had some frames. Um, and this is one of the, a lot of stuff at the sale was a little, a little overpriced, to be honest. Um, this was not. I paid $2 for this because it was half off day. This is a Mill Hill 6x6 frame. These are not $4 if you buy them regular price. Um, but it comes with all the, you know, the backing stuff. I picked up, this is by the Family Tree Frame Company. Um, it's a six by six flea market blackbird frame. Um, this again was $5 because half off. I should do all my videos like this. Uh, this is the frame company. I looked it up because I was Googling things while I was standing there, um, you know, going through the, the stuff that was available. I believe this is the frame company that does frames for um, some of the Country Cottage and Little House Needleworks designs. Um, so this is not a, a $10 frame. It's not a five dollar frame, definitely. And then I found this, um, which I paid six dollars for. So lots of I'm good on six by six square frames. This is I cannot read it. It says handmade by, and I can't read the name. Hartford, North Carolina. It looks like it says chop six by six white. So I don't know who made this, but I'm guessing that it's worth more than six dollars. That's good. I also found these sitting in a box. Uh, these are put some behind it so you can see. Do you see it? Shaped like a witch. These were made to, um, originally made to commemorate an anniversary of the Salem Witch Trials. Uh, my friend Caroline has one of the original antique pair that I believe they borrowed her pair to cast this um, so that they could create this, which is a reproduction of the antique. Uh, so I got this. This was... They had it priced at $20. I paid $10. Uh, it's a little high for a estate sale price, but I know that these aren't. The black pair, at least, is not super easy to find. And even if you did find it, you're not going to pay $10 for it. I think it's like $26 something. So I love those. The very last thing I got, um, they had this little 
box. And I opened it. Saw that. This is a Liberty Hill box. Um, it was a very limited edition Christmas box, so it came with all of these. I'll just pick them up. Um, it has this, this piece on earth. A little tag. There's a little hand painted Christmas tree thread wander. A little group of old-fashioned candy cane ornaments. There are two little star ornaments. There is a house scissor fob or pendant. A little felt or wool piece for a needle book. And finally, the thing that makes it so limited edition, this silver mercury ornament. Here's what the box looks like. And you can see Liberty Hill 2008. So I'm thinking I'm going to sand this down and paint over the top. I'm kidding. Don't send me hate mail. <laughs> Do not send me hate mail. I'm not going to paint over it. I'm going to leave it as is. It's beautiful. <laughs> This was only this was only seven fifty, so I feel like I got a really really good deal on that. Um, I can put all the little pieces back before I lose it. So, yeah, I was overall you know even though the traditional stitching stuff had sold, I was or was overpriced out of my range. I was still really happy with the stuff I picked up from the estate sale. It's the first estate sale I've ever been to, and I'll definitely go to another one. Um, but the downside is that I started getting allergies on the way there and then by the end of the day or by the time I got back from the estate sale, I was so miserable that I sneezed for like 24 hours straight and no medicine helped. So that's why I made an appointment with an allergist and learned I'm allergic to everything. All right, I have finally made my way through all of the piles around me. It was officially the longest video yet because of the like hour long haul. Yeah, uh, I hope everyone has a really great time with stitching. Um, I'm gonna be back to talk about my plans for 2018. Right now my plans don't extend much past November, which is trying to finish the summer schoolhouse piece. Uh, all three of the the little pieces that are in the final part and if I have time working a bit more on uh, English garden sewing bag because I really like that but I do have some plans in the works for what I want my stitching to look like in 2018 aside from the journey piece that I'm doing for sampler guild so I will be back Hopefully a little sooner than a month because these videos are long when you go mm, mm, Too long too long for me um, Too much time to do subtitles honestly uh, But yeah, I'll be back to talk about plans until then enjoy your stitching and I hope you all Have a great time Bye